G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. So this was from actually just a couple of weeks ago, not uh, pretty much an age ago. Uh, this is also going to be my first video featuring footage of me on my new wheel, so please see the description and you'll see the adjustments made down there in regards to equipment. But a couple of weeks ago, this was the combination of race B, it was Kyoto Driving Park Yamagiwa. So it's the Kyoto Driving Park Complex, this is the Yamagiwa variation, so it's just the top north part, not doing the little loop down below. So we skip over that part, making the chicane 8, 9 and 10 in this combination here. Now the car of the week, uh, as there normally is, is the Toyota Supra, the GR Supra Racing Concept, which is the car we've gone for here with a, a Microsoft livery for, for some reason. Um, because, I don't know, this is PlayStation, not Xbox, I don't know why I've gone Microsoft, but anyway, we'll gloss over that. Moving on, straight into the first race, so this one was a fairly close race, you can see I'm downfield a little bit. I started, I think it was 10th, I don't think I've lost or made any positions since I've been talking here, but we're just going to keep an eye on the general pack up ahead, because uh, very much like the St. Croix, Sainty Croix uh, video, I felt like everyone was quite well up to the pace, so the races here were very quick and very close, very difficult to overtake. Main overtaking opportunity is this, but you see, just for some strange reason, the guy behind just dives down the inside from about 400 million light years back and just shoves me very wide and I just take to the grass and that puts me offline and I actually loses further position to Fleshy so I'm down in 12th thanks to that shredded banjo and then that Mercedes comes for a dive bomb of the century that doesn't quite pay off. Now the main thing with this Supra actually is uh, it oversees massively so uh, you've really got to wait until you're dead straight coming out of the corner basically. Uh, it's good in the straight line though so any loss you make from waiting to get onto the power you gain back on the straights, so that's not too bad. But you see, we're coming back up to this Peugeot, get a little bit of a wiggle on out of the final corner there, so actually that negates any extra speed we were going to get to get an overtake done. He's also in the slipstream of the Supra ahead of him, so we're not quite able to get a run uh, up into turn one. So, of course, him being in the Peugeot VGT, it's not the Supra, so he's obviously going to be a little bit off the pace. Probably only a few tenths, so I think the Peugeot VGT is fairly okay. Yellow flag up ahead, what's going on? Someone spun it on the exit of the chicane there, the, or the S's I guess technically, not really a chicane, as we head into turn 5. Supra up ahead, got a little bit sideways in the entry to the corner, probably got that brake bias a little bit too far to the rear, but we'll see what happens coming down into the chicane here. The car behind 7 tenths back, so I'm going to be very surprised if we see a move going on here. Actually the Peugeot just gives the Supra ahead of him a little bit of a bump and then it goes into the back of the Toyota FT1 and then of course I go into the back of the Peugeot because all of its speed was uh, transferred to that Supra. But unfortunately I'm not quite able to get the move there. Coming into this hairpin, Peugeot comes with a savage, absolute savage punt onto the other Supra coming into uh, turn 12. So I'm able to get that position up into 10th. So let's get our head down now, see if we can just find a way past this shredded badger guy. He's, he's racing fine, but it's extremely annoying. Go for a look up the inside at the final corner, get a nice little punt from behind. So it's being nice and cozy here. And that just throws me off a little bit. I'm not quite able, I wasn't quite able to stick to what I know. I wasn't quite able to stick to my line and uh, keep my foot in it there, so I end up actually losing that position to Fleshy there. Coming into turn one, we'll see what we can get done here on the brakes nicely, trend in towards the apex there, Fleshy apex is way too early and gets a poor exit. I'm looking up the inside on the on the uh, S's, not quite the best place to go, but I'm very close behind here, so I'm going to get quite a bit of the sort of dirty air, the air wash from behind the cars up ahead, uh, because those S's, when you're on your own, when you perfect the line, and I mean absolutely dead perfect the line, um, it's flat out. But of course, if you get any ounce of dirty air, you will have to lift, ideally on the first initial left-hander into the S's there. So coming into the chicane now, Supra comes for a return attack onto the Peugeot, and the Peugeot is absolutely sent to the absolute oblivion, sent firmly 
into the waste management facility here at Kyoto, of course becoming a large bin at that point, and then Fleshy earns himself a five second penalty for that, and the Toyota FT1 up ahead has a one second penalty, uh, probably from um, exploiting trap limits. Now they will serve their penalties coming onto the uh, pit straight on the side of the next lap. Now, speaking of track limits, this track has a very, I don't know, questionable but easy to predict track limit system. You can have two wheels on the curb and two wheels beyond the curb onto the grass. So as long as you've got any part of any wheel onto a curb, regardless of where the other wheels are, you're within track limits. Now at certain points on the track you want to do that, at other points you don't. So for example, on the apex of these long corners you do not want to be getting a wheel onto the inside grass because you will be thrown up into the air upon coming back onto the curb here. Now let's see coming up through the S's here, do we quite take a flat no, turn a little bit early for turn 4, so I'm not quite able to get uh, that flat out as ideally when you take your line through there, you, you, on every S you have to get your front, like the front inside up on top of that curb to sort of get the car around. Uh, each individual corner in the S. You'll see when I do a qualifying map a little bit later what I mean. But you see at this point I've gotten up into 8th on the final lap so we'll see how we go now. Let's see how we take the chicane down here. See, look at that. Absolutely abusing track limits. I, I should be put in jail for track limit abuse there. Um, there's obviously absolutely no counter evidence for me as it's extremely clear what I'm doing here. I actually go a little bit deep into the turn 12 hairpin once again but I slide it around there quite nicely I guess. You see we've got 7th place up ahead, we've only got a few corners left so it's going to be in 8th place unless I bin it or unless someone else bins it and I gain a position there on the exit of that chicane there, turn 14 I get a nice exit onto there, you can take two wheels onto the grass, two wheels onto the curb on the exit of that uh, right left complex before the final corner but enough of all that rambling as you see we do exit the final corner in a adequate fashion to allow us to get 8th place in this particular case, setting our fastest lap of a 134.1, which isn't too bad for race pace, I guess, it's not, not too bad, but not, not great, you really want to be into the 33s, ideally, so you see the positions there, I was able to get ahead of that initial group that I was in, that my group, I guess, I was able to get to the front of that, just by virtue of keeping my nose relatively clean and avoiding penalties, and, uh, you know, making or taking advantage of when other people get penalties. I actually had a clean race somehow. There was definitely some contact, but no, it was clean, so it's fine. So we'll move on to the next portion of the video here, which is a qualifying session. So let's see. This is qualifying now. We're going to take a look of this track, Kyoto Driving Park, Yamagiwa. It has 15 turns. Uh, it is uh, one of three layouts of Kyoto Driving Park and it was in the game upon release, of course, based in Japan, it's a 4.9 kilometer long track. So it's breaking just after the 50 meter board, going into fourth gear, you kind of want to take a traditional V shape around here, uh, you can keep it to the inside, that's a valid line as well, but I took a bit of a V shape there, now these are the S's there, you want to get your front, your, your two inner wheels up onto each curb to keep it flat out because the car turns a little bit extra on the curbs than on the, on the road, I guess, and then into turn five now, up on the 15 metre board, go down one gear and trail break in towards the apex. You see I take a very innermost line there and get a rather average exit. Uh, coming down into the triple chicane now, this is uh, death central braking just on the 100 metre board, trailing it in in third gear and just feather the throttle on each apex except for the last one because you're carrying enough speed for downforce to do that for you. So we managed to get power up that hill nicely over to the right hand side braking just on the end of the lettering on the road just as you end that I probably broke a little bit too late there but it's okay not to worry come into the double chicane now so you want to take nice wide entry up on the curb down two gears throw it over that curb and then use that power to rotate the car towards the exit for the final corner braking just on the 50 meter board down into second gear slide it around probably not perfect line, probably broke slightly too late, so probably just before the 50 meter board on the final corner, but we managed to get an okay exit, you see we're gaining on a 133.6, we crossed the line with a 133.563 now, eagle-eyed viewers would have noticed that that was actually my previous record as well, so I set a lap time exactly the same as my uh, then current 
personal best. And I also didn't have the footage for that first lap, so I guess this was the next best thing to set the exact same lap again while recording. So I've actually managed to put it on pole position this time. I've got AS and BS players in this lobby, so that's fairly good. I'll take it. So I've said it plenty of times before. When I'm in pole position, I want to break away from the pack because if you start on pole and you finish in any other position other than first, it's obviously a very disappointing outcome. More Motorsport 101 with smokescreen here. So uh, hopefully you're learning things every single day. Especially because you've got more days now to watch because we're all in quarantine thanks to the old coronavirus. But let's focus back onto the race now. So through the S's nicely that time. So I'm the only car in this train that hasn't got to aero wash over me to help me or to hinder me get through those S's I guess. So that was... That's always good. Coming through turn five now, or turn six actually. I've been <laughs> I've been referring to that as turn five the whole video. I've just looked at my notes. It's actually turn six, but not to worry. Coming into the triple chicane now. Let's see how much time I gain here. Hopping over the curbs, obviously. Have a look at the gap up ahead. Absolutely. Oh my goodness, looking behind. Absolutely stretched out to six tenths. So for some reason, I, for some reason, I'm the only person that knows how to really exploit the track limits there. And uh, that will actually come back to bite me a little bit later, but we'll get to that when we get to that, obviously. Uh, let's see, coming towards the end of the first lap, I've got a second ahead of my opponents now. Absolutely, that that is abuse right there. That absolute, oh my goodness, an absolute animal of abuse. Uh, coming into the final corner, onto the main straight now, 1.6 seconds ahead, so it's fairly convincing so far. So they've obviously cars behind, they've obviously got caught up in a bit of fighting there, and I'm actually pulled out of slipstream range, so we'll go around for one more lap, let's just consolidate, just on the end of the shadow there you want to drop into fourth gear, trail brake towards the apex, so you actually take a mo more in the line than my qualifying lap that time, that's generally a little bit better I think, because you don't lose as much time in the exit. On the S's now, once again, two wheels up on each curb to help get the car turned, and you see we get through there absolutely beautifully flat out the whole way up the hill um, coming into turn five now that I've learnt just after the 50 meter board drop into fifth gears it's not quite as tight as turn one so you can have one extra gear up there uh, on the power nicely up towards the exit this is turn seven a little bit of a right hand kick and we drop down the major hill braking just at the bottom right on the 100 meter board have a look at this look where I break just on the 100 just slightly before it I paused on the first frame of where the brake the brake input meter lifted, indicating I was starting to brake. It was what? A couple of meters before the 100 meter board. So remember that, please. It is crucial for the enjoyment of this video. You now must watch the end because it will be extremely unsatisfying if you don't find out what I'm talking about. So we'll continue on, um, coming into the double chicane now, down two gears, jump. It's basically a jump over that curb. You use the initial curb to jump over the grass and then onto the final corner now. Second gear, slide it in. That was actually okay. Not too bad. In towards close to the apex and then power out towards the exit. Uh, I've said it again. I've said it previously. The super very over series so you've got to be pointed very straight towards the exit so you don't get as much over -steer. At this point I'm nearly five seconds ahead and honestly that was the story of that race. See by the end of it 7.3 seconds ahead very convincing victory there now that is actually that's an extremely good result for more than one reason as well so first place excellent but I was in a very strong lobby as well so that's going to increase my driver rating by a significant amount I was up against other AS and other BS players and I you know it was extremely convincing victory there and I've got a three star result pole position fastest lap and a clean race the fastest lap was lap two the one I showed you so um very nice there, but we'll move on. Show you another race now. Let's see here. So obviously my driver rating is going to have gone up quite significantly, which means we're going to be in a next level lobby there. Now, if you recognize my livery, you'll see I'm on second, confirmed by the initial starting board there. Uh, fairly similar scene to before AS and BS players, although the qualifying times are slightly quicker. And um, let's have a look, see how this race goes. So. Uh, I've said it before, if I put it on pole, I want to pull away from the group. If I'm in second place, I want to have a good race with first, regardless of who wins. If I have a good race and the other guy wins, fair play, I'll take it. 
because I'm happy with good racing in the end, uh, especially if if it's with someone that's actually faster than me. So he's in the Audi R8, very good around corners, so he can get the extra rotation through these S's here, although I'm actually catching quite a bit by virtue of Slipstream them taking a line of lesser resistance compared to the leader there. Looking around the outside of turn six, I'm quite able to get it not quite down on the radar. He was just able to get into that gap before I closed the door on him. So that's not too bad. I'll take it. So that's obviously setting a good precedent. I want to keep this race clean. I want to keep this race nice. Sliding in the apex there. Ca gaining a lot of time on the, on the entry there. Actually, he takes a, <laughs> a very close line to penalties coming through here. Now coming into this corner here, uh, I break where I feel like I need to and I go up the inside and then he just kind of, I don't know how to explain that, he kind of glitched off the track. Um, I really did not feel like I made contact though because I'm using a wheel now, I've got force feedback. There was no, I, there, was no for, uh, there was no feedback in the wheel, I did not feel like I made contact because the wheel will kind of jerk when you make contact with something because you know, it's trying to communicate the steering feel uh, and that of course would jerk about in a real car if you were to make a collision uh, and that didn't happen so I was fairly I was fairly adamant that you know, he kind of glitched off the track and you see on the leaderboard now he's down at 6 and he's got a 1 bar he's got 1 bar of um, I was going to say health 1 bar of signal strength so I would be I would go so far as to say that Matt, he broke too late but the game didn't realise it so it was going to allow him to you know get the corner correct but then he glitched off the track coming into the chicane the triple chicane of lap three see I just go into the back of this guy as we go through the triple chicane and he gets a 1.5 second penalty so you get half a second for cutting an, an individual corner and he obviously cut all three to get that let's have a look here I'm going to stop it right there, his brake lights come on. Look how far ahead he is of where my brake marker was. So, and I'm already braking, you'll see when I zoom out, my brakes are on. So he was a good 15, 20 metres before that line, I was a good 5 if that, when I showed you earlier. And, you know, you know I went into the back of him and, oh, okay, I went into the back of him. I will, I'm going to say, yeah, he did brake early, but, um, you know, I'm not really going to say that it was completely his fault because I'm the following car in Slipstream, I probably should take that into account, but I was obviously very strong on the entry of that chicane to, compared to the rest of the field. So, you know, it was going to happen eventually that I was going to go into a, the back of a car that was taking a more conservative entry into there. And he's going to serve the penalty here now. Admittedly, I actually did, did feel a little bit bad because from this point here, or from the point where I got into first from the other guys lag going off the track. Um, I was actually having a good race with this Pagani guy. So you see, I actually break as well. Uh, I wanted it to be as if I got a one and a half second penalty as well, and I actually let him in ahead here because I wanted to continue racing with him. But he absolutely, <laughs> he just drives himself off the track. And it was at this point here, I'm gonna go, you know what, I'm not even gonna bother waiting up for that because I slowed up to have a race with him. It's not my fault if then he continues off the track. So. At that point there, I felt like I was okay to go back into the lead, uh, but that led to another victory there, which was okay. But we are going to go back to, where is he, AMG Shark in the Audi R8. Now, when the game, when a player has low signal strength, the game will, you know, you know, you know to keep all the cards close together and able to race. If a signal drops out momentarily, the game will continue the car on as if it was taking the correct racing line and I I feel like that's what the game was going to do at that corner but then when you know he pinged he you know jetted off the track so I really did not feel like I made contact you see it kicked off in the lobby afterwards saying uh, what what the hell WTH and then another player calls him an effing something so that tells a bit of a story maybe he was quite upset I did question him about it and he calls me a rammer and I'm like, dude, I did not touch you. I really did not feel like I touched you. And then that message there was for the other guy. And then, yeah, I say, I didn't touch you. And then he just responds, idiot. So I was called an idiot, apparently. But in the end, I, I wasn't the one with the signal, one bar of signal strength. We'll go back to the incident and have a look at it. I hit my mark on the end of the lettering on the road. Let's have a look. I'm going to stop it there. Look how far away. Look at the front right of my car. 
it's very clearly quite able to go alongside as evident here and then watch the frames here his car just jets ahead just there and I'm going to pause it that's when he started to move forward away from me look at the space between our uh, two cars as we zoom in onto the radar there there's plenty of space between us I've seen cases of cars being directly side by side and those two um, you know indicators of the cars the red one and the blue one the red one being me and the blue one being the other player practically half overlap when the cars are directly side by side so you know there was plenty of space between us I really did not feel like we made contact but maybe he wasn't shown in the correct place on the track because of his poor signal strength maybe um, you know maybe that caused it maybe he was actually further to the left than what appeared to me on my game um, you know it was a bit of a dive bomb though I will admit but I did hit my braking mark uh, and I made the corner relatively okay, maybe slid a little bit wide, maybe should have broke a little bit earlier, because it was lap one, you know, I'm considering all the circumstances here, but at the end of the day, you know, the moral of this story, whose fault is it if an incident occurs because of someone's bad signal strength? That's where I'm going to end the video today, so I do thank you for making it to the end, do let me know opinions and thoughts down in the comments below, especially because you've got extra time now, you know, social distancing, self-quarantine, all out at the moment. Uh, yeah, but that's going to be it. Thank you for making it to the end. Do hit that like button if you enjoyed, and do subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. That's going to be the end of the video today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.